Chapter Three of Christmas Eve at Swamp's End by Norman Duncan. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Three: The Making of a Man. Soon after dark, John Fairmeadow, with a pack on his broad back, swung from the jumping Jimmy trail into the clearing of Swamp's End ceasing only then his high vibrant song and came striding down the huddled street a big man in rare humour with life labour and the night a shadow not john fairmeadow's shadow was in cautious pursuit but of this dark secret follower john fairmeadow was not aware near the cafe of egyptian delights he stumbled the pursuing shadow gasped and john fairmeadow was so mightily exercised for his pack that he ejaculated in a fashion most unministerial but recovered his footing with a jerk and doubtless near turned pale with apprehension but the pack was safe the delicate contents whatever they were quite undisturbed. John Fairmeadow gently adjusted the pack, stamped the snow from his soles as a precautionary measure, wiped the frost from his brows and eyelids in the same cautious wisdom, and, still followed by the shadow, strode on, but with infinitely more care. At the Red Elephant, Pale Peter's glowing saloon, he turned in. The bar, as always in these days, gave the young apostle to those unrighteous parts a roaring welcome. It was become a fashion, big, bubbling, rosy John Fairmeadow, with the square jaw, the frank, admonitory tongue, the tender and persuasive heart, the competent, not unwilling fists, was welcome everywhere from the Bottle River camps and the cant-hook cutting to the bunk-houses of the Yellowtail, from beyond the Divide to the lower waters of the Big River, in every saloon, bunk-house, superintendent's office, and cook's quarters of this wide green parish. Welcome to preach and to pray, to bury, marry, gossip, and scold, and upon goodly provocation to fight all to the same righteous end. A clean man, a big, broad-shouldered, deep-chested, long-legged body, with a soul to match it, a glowing heart, and a purpose lifted high. There was no mistaking the man by men. John Fairmeadow, clad like a lumberjack, upright now, in the full stature of a man, body and soul, grinned like a delighted schoolboy. His fine head was thrown back, in the pride of clean, sure strength. His broad face was in a rosy glow. His great chest still heaved with the labor of a stormy trail. His gray eyes flashed and twinkled in the soft light of pale Peter's many lamps. Twinkled? And with merriment? In that long, stifling, roaring, smoky, fume-laden room? for a moment, then closed a bit worn and melancholy, too, but presently, with reviving faith to urge them, opened wide and heartily, and began to twinkle again. The bar was in festive array. Christmas greens, red berries, ribbons, tissue paper, and gleaming tinfoil, flash of mirrors, bright color, branches of pine, cedar, and spruce, from the big balsamic woods. It was crowded with lumberjacks, great fellows from the forest, big of body and passion, here gathered in celebration of the festival. John Fairmeadow, getting all at once and vigorously under way, shouted, Merry Christmas, boys! and Hello, Charlie! to the bartender. And he shook hands with Pale Peter, slapped Billy the Beast on the back, roared a greeting to Gingerbread Jenkins, exclaimed, Merry Christmas, with the speed and detonation of a Gatling gun, inquired after Butcher Long's brood of kids in the east, and cried, Hello, old man, 
and what's the good word from yellowtail and how'd you do and glad to see ya and everywhere shook hands and clapped backs carefully preserving however his own back from being slapped and devoutly ejaculated god bless you men a merry christmas to you all and every one and eventually disappeared in the direction of pale peter's living quarters leaving an uproar of genial delight behind him john fairmeadow's shadow however unable to enter the bar of the red elephant waited in seclusion across the windy street mrs bartender was still yawning as john fairmeadow entered upon her ennui but when the big minister exercising the softest sort of caution slipped off his gigantic pack and deposited it with exquisitely delicate care and a face of deep concern on the table she opened her faded eyes with interested curiosity and as for the contents of the pack there's no more concealing them the article must now be declared and produced it was a baby of course it was a baby the thing has been obvious all along john fairmeadow's foundling left in a basket at the threshold of his temporary lodging-room at big rapids that very morning first to john fairmeadow's consternation and then to his gleeful delight as for the baby itself it was presently unswathed it is quite beyond me to describe its excellence of appearance and conduct john fairmeadow himself couldn't make the attempt and escape annihilation it was a real and regular baby however one might suggest in inadequate description that it was a plump baby one might add that it was a lusty baby it had hair it had a pucker of amazement its eyes two of them were properly disposed in its head its hands were of what are called rose-leaf dimensions it had apparently a fixed habit of squirming it had no teeth evidently a healthy baby a baby that any mother might be proud of doubtless a marvel of infantile perfection in every respect i should not venture to dispute such an assertion nor would john fairmeadow nor any other bold gentleman of swamp's end and elegant corners not in these later days mrs bartender of course lifted her languid white hands in uttermost astonishment there john fairmeadow exploded looking round like a showman what do you think of that eh but mr fairmeadow the poor lady stammered what have you brought it here for why not john fairmeadow demanded why not indeed it's perfectly polite what am i to do with it oh it isn't intoxicated my good woman john fairmeadow ran on in great wrath and it's never been in jail but my dear mr fairmeadow do be sensible what am i to do with it why uh, i should think john fairmeadow ventured the baby was still sleeping like a brick that you might first of all uh, resuscitate it would a slight poke in the ribs provoke animation but the baby didn't need a poke in the ribs it didn't need any other sort of resuscitation not that baby the self-dependent courageous perfectly competent and winning little rascal resuscitated itself instantly too and positively and apparently without the least effort in the world moreover and with remarkable directness it demanded what it wanted and got it and having been nourished to its satisfaction from young master bartender's silver-mounted bottle which john fairmeadow then secretly slipped into his pocket 
and having yawned in a fashion so tremendous that mrs bartender herself could never hope to equal that infinite expression of boredom and having smiled and having wriggled and having giggled and cooed and attempted actually attempted to get its great toe in its mouth without extraneous assistance of any sort whatsoever even without the slightest suggestion that such a thing would be an amazingly engaging trick in a baby of its age and degree it burst into a gurgle of glee so wondrously genuine and infectious that poor bored mrs bartender herself was quite unable to resist it and promptly and publicly and finally committed herself to the assertion that the baby was a deer, wherever it came from. John Fairmeadow snatched it from the table, and was about to make off with it, when Mrs. Bartender interposed. "'My dear Mr. Fairmeadow,' said she, "'that child will simply catch its death of cold.' There was something handy, however, something of silk and fawn-skin, and with this enveloping the baby john fairmeadow swung in a roar with it to the bar and held it aloft in all that seething wickedness pure symbol of the blessed christmas festival and there was a sensation of course a sensation beginning in vociferous ejaculations but presently failing to a buzz of conjecture there were questions to follow to which john fairmeadow answered that he had found the baby that the baby was nobody's baby that the baby was his baby by right of finders keepers that the baby was everybody's baby and that the baby would presently be somebody's much-loved baby that he'd vouch for the baby now resting content in john fairmeadow's arms was diffidently approached and examined gingerbread jenkins poked a finger at it and said in a voice of the most inimical description get out without disturbing the baby's serene equanimity in the slightest young billy lush charging his soft boyish voice with all the horrifying intent he could muster threatened to catch the baby as though bent upon devouring it on the spot but the baby only chuckled with delight billy the beast incautiously approached a finger near the baby's stout abdomen and the baby with a perfectly fearless glance into the very depths of the beast's frowsy beard clutched the finger and smiled like an angel long butcher long attempted to tweak the baby's nose but the effort was a ridiculous failure practised so clumsily on an object so small and the only effect was to cause the baby to achieve a tremendous wriggle and a loud scream of laughter these experiments were variously repeated but all with the same cherubic result the baby conducted itself with admirable self-possession and courage as though indeed it had been used every hour of its life to the company of riotous lumberjacks in town the inevitable happened of course billy the beast whose pocket was smoking with his wages proposed the baby's health and there was an uproarious rush for the bar just a minute boys john fairmeadow drawled it was an awkward moment but the jacks were by this time used to being bidden by this man who was a man and the rush was forthwith halted just a minute boys john fairmeadow repeated for your minister the baby was then held aloft in john fairmeadow's big kind sensitive hands and from this safe perch softly smiled upon the crowd of flushed and bearded faces all round about boys john fairmeadow drawled significantly this is the only sort of church we have in these woods there was a laughing stir and shuffling 
but presently a tolerant silence fell in obedience to the custom john fairmeadow had established and caps came off and pipes were smothered a little away from the bar please the big preacher suggested pale peter nodded to charlie the infidel and the clink of glasses ceased and the bottles were left in peace and the hands of the bartender rested now boys said john fairmeadow letting the foundling fall softly into his arms i'm not going to preach to you to-night though god knows you need it i'm just going to pray for the baby dear father of us all wilful children of the vale he began at once lifting a placid believing face above the smiling child in his arms we ask thy guardianship of this child in us is no perfect counsel for him nor any help whatsoever that he may surely apprehend in thine acceptable wisdom thou settest thy little ones in a world where presently only thou canst teach them teach thou then this little one thou alone knowest the right path for a little boy's inquiring feet lead then this little boy thou alone art saving helper to an adventuring lad help then this lad thou alone art all-perceiving and persuasive alone art truth-teller to a bewildered youth and good example in his wondering sight be then good example and teller of truth to this youth thou alone art in the fashioning ways of thine own world a maker of men make then of this little child a man we ask no easy path for him no unmanly way no indulgent tempering of the winds we pray for no riches for no great deeds of his doing for no ease at all nor any satisfaction we ask of thee in his behalf good manhood lead him where true men must go lead him where they learn the all of life lead him where they level down and build again lead him where in righteous strength his hands may lift the fallen lead him where in anger he may strike lead him where his tears may fall lead him where his heart may find a pure desire o almighty god lover of children father of us all alike make of this child in the measure of his service and in the stature of his soul a man amen amen indeed end of chapter three the making of a man